Alfred, I've started recording the video now. Um, whenever you're ready, sir. Take a deep breath. You're going to do great. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Nate Drury and I'm here to discuss a topic regarding the loss of biodiversity in marine ecosystems. So first off, I want to start by painting the big picture in your head. This is a sturdy ecosystem. It's sturdy because it's held together by many different species working in coordination with each other. And this is what humans are doing to these ecosystems. Pulling species left and right. And notice as how I pull more blocks from this board becomes more and more unstable. We are currently living in the sixth mass extinction time period known to the earth called the Anthropocene Epoch. We're losing species at a rate that could have detrimental effects to our balance of daily life. Humans depend on this balanced ecosystem that we can harvest and use consistently. So pulling these species from our ecosystem could have really bad effects on our life. Our marine wildlife is taking the biggest hit in regards to biodiversity loss. Over the last few decades, our marine wildlife has been cut in half. Right now, one of our apex predators of the sea, bluefin tuna, are nearing extinction. Bluefin play a vital role. Bluefin um, play a vital role to our marine ecosystems and are very important to our world economy. So that brings up a very important question. How do we protect this marine biodiversity? What can we as humanity do to ensure our ecosystems don't fall like a game of Jenga? In order to protect our marine biodiversity, people must truly buy into conservation ideas and concepts regarding saving species in our oceans. Concepts for protecting our marine biodiversity range from things so big like political campaigns to small techniques that may cost $10 and end up saving money in the long run. You as an individual can make a significant impact on marine biodiversity by donating to conservation organizations. By donating to marine conservation organizations, you now play a role in protecting our marine ecosystems. You can help push political campaigns as well as perform scientific research and experiments. First up, we have Oceana. Oceana is a great nonprofit organization to donate to. Oceana has a mission to stop the overfishing of bluefin tuna, in which they use a celebrity, Adrian Grenier, to draw awareness to the issue. Because Grenier has such an influence on a crowd, they use him to persuade people to join their campaign in saving bluefin tuna by signing a petition. And this actually does have a decent impact on bluefin because Oceana is very involved in political campaigns. Next up, we have the Coral Restoration Foundation. This is another great option, and the Coral Restoration Foundation specializes in saving coral reefs. Coral is home to over 25% of marine wildlife, including our best friend, the bluefin tuna. This organization actually sends scuba divers into areas where the coral has died, and they plant hand-sized fragments of living coral to allow that area to start growing back. Just in Florida alone, they've managed to restore over 66,000 corals. Next up, we need to normalize the idea of avoiding the purchase of plastic. By decreasing the use of plastic, you're making a difference in the plastic pollution in our oceans. We need people to hop on this train so we can reverse this terrible plastic pollution in our oceans. <laughs> A study performed by a group of scientists and biologists was published in the Marine Pollution Bulletin. This study showed plastic contents found in the stomachs of bluefin tuna. According to the study, one in three bluefin have plastic content in their stomachs. This not only has a bad effect on their habitats and survival, but can also alter their reproductive abilities, which is really bad for this already endangered species. Next up, society as a whole needs to regulate our purchase of oil. There is constantly oil being shipped across our oceans due to us having such a heavy reliance on oil. 
Just in the U.S. territory alone, 4.9 million liters of oil are spilled each year. This can have terrible effects on marine habitats and species, and especially our little buddy, the bluefin. One example of this Deepwater Horizon spill, one example of this is the Deepwater Horizon spill, where 4 million barrels of oil were spilled into the Gulf of Mexico, which is an essential breeding ground for bluefin. This oil spill took place at the worst possible time because the bluefin was at the peak of their spawning season. There's no telling how many bluefin this oil spill killed, let alone other species. So by reducing our purchase of oil, we can decline the amount of oil transported across our oceans and in turn prevent these catastrophic oil spills. So after all this, what's the big takeaway from the day? Normalize ocean conservation efforts. Normalizing the practice of ocean conservation will provide us with the best chance of protecting our marine biodiversity. Everyone can contribute. Maybe it's something as simple as taking five minutes out of your day to donate to a marine conservation program. Or if money's not your thing, maybe don't buy that case of plastic water bottles next time. And instead, get a hydro flask with a little Save the Turtle sticker on it. <laughs> the point is, our marine biodiversity is struggling and everyone has the opportunity to make a difference. You just have to buy in and make ocean conservation a normal lifestyle. Thank you. Woohoo! Great job, man, great job. Dude, you hit like 741 and you were flying. You got a lot of words in that amount of time. Um, I ended with almost 1,400 words. That's pretty good. Hey. You Square it away, man. That's awesome. Hey, if you don't mind, hit stop, share on your screen. All right, there we go. There we are. All right, so who's up next? Y'all are doing a great job. I thought y'all had this worked out, guys. I'll go. <laughs> So, guy, uh, somebody else dressed up and, and theirs as well, and then I complimented them. As a matter of fact, it was Luke. It was and Luke. He, he told me he was – oh, you saw it? He was barefooted the whole time? <laughs> Were you barefooted? <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Hey, you couldn't tell. That's a good job. All right, so, Jay, you're up next. Is that right? Yes, sir. All righty. Let me spotlight your video. All right, you'll be doing the share screen as well, correct? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Um, let me reset your stopwatch. Yes, sir. Okay, so you've kind of seen now what's going on. You've seen a few presentations, and you know what, what's – just take a deep breath. You're going to be fine. Got your script in front of you there. Um, I'll hit start. Uh, once you take over, and once you take over, it's yours, man. You just, you just go with it. Um, all right, I have it reset. So whenever you're ready. I'm ready. The loss of biodiversity, how do we predict – Marine Biodiversity by Jay Hill. I have a story to tell you about uh, a tuna named Timmy. Timmy tuna was a bluefin tuna. Every day he played with his family. They all loved each other and couldn't be happier. Then one day a net dropped and took Timmy's family away. Timmy was the only one left. He had no one left to play with. Soon after he realized everyone was gone. But who's to blame? Humanity is to blame. We have overfished the bluefin tuna for too long. If we need to put a stop to it, we need to stop for we don't have to destroy any more tuna families like they did Timmy's. If we can save the bluefin tuna and help them repopulate, Timmy will once again be able to have a family. Hello, my name is Jalen Hill, and I believe saving marine biodiversity could be the key to saving humanity. Marine biodiversity is steadily decreasing around the world, especially certain species such as the bluefin tuna. There are many ways the world can save the bluefin tuna, such as the seeding, the trade of all bluefin tuna. We as the human race should come together and save our marine biodiversity. In order to ensure another generation 
be able to see them with their own eyes and not inside a textbook or photo. If we were to cease trading the bluefin tuna today, then the first step to saving the bluefin tuna had just been taken. If we indefinitely see the bluefin tuna trade, the population will definitely be able to recover at a faster rate. This is because they are no longer being hunted by fishermen to put in a plate for consumption. They will be able to live and mate, which would increase the amount of bluefin tuna in our world. Carl Stefina, a wildlife ecologist and nature studier, says in her article, even if international trade is banned, bluefin tuna could still be caught and sold within any given country. But the fish are now, are now sufficiently scarce that without Japan's price, many boats would turn unprofitable and give up. The fish can recover and a more sustainable, sustainable fishery develop. This statement from the text article emphasizes on the recovery of the bluefin tuna and the effects on the fishing and trading by fishermen. This showed they're hoping the bluefin, the bluefin population to increase. And if, and if we activate this, we can successfully discourage fishermen from fishing the bluefin. Today, bluefin tuna have dropped 97% in population levels worldwide and throughout history. Only 2.6 of the bluefin are unfished, whereas there are only a 4.2% of the population left altogether today. The high demand of bluefin tuna is the same. To have decreased that much over the years is incredibly and unbelievable. We have overfished so many bluefin tuna that there are barely any left in today's world. The numbers will continue to decrease because the high demand will kill them all. In the article, it said Japanese tuna brokers protested today that the European Union or EU decides to pour a worldwide trade ban on Atlantic bluefin tuna. EU governments indicated that they would back a complete international ban on the species to allow the bluefin to recover from near the overfishing. This really shows the report need to save the bluefin tuna. The problem in that in today's society, many people see that to the overfishing of the bluefin tuna, but the main consumers do not care if they go extinct. They just want the bluefin tuna to eat. Even furthermore, showing that the trade will make the demand decline because there will be little to no ways they could further receive the fish, they were forced them to find other alternative fish. Speaking of alternative fish, let me tell you about the marine food chain that would be disrupted without the bluefin. The problem is that a ban on bluefin trade could lead to increased fishing of the, of the other species. The environmental take on the bluefin tuna is that without bluefin tuna. Squid numbers could rise in the absence of the tuna predators, which could adversely affect the sardine population. This imbalance in the food chain could potentially affect a lot of different food chains. I take them out of their natural food chains. The animals that are consumed and consume bluefin will experience staggering effects. These effects could be the rise and fall of their population in that chain, not to mention this could also affect the entire ocean's food web. So how will we save our marine biodiversity? I believe by banning trade in the bluefin tuna, it could further help repopulate their species. Many other people also believe in this. Many professionals have admitted to believing that the solution to the problem was to ban and seed the trade of the bluefin tuna. By doing so, they can recover and become abundant once again. This solution could be the answer. The ban, the ban of trade will give the bluefin tuna time to rest and heal from the damage that we caused them. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, don't stop sharing your screen yet. That's a great job, by the way. Uh, let me hit pause. Uh, let me hit the stop recording. Record. There we go. So uh, you are now being recorded, and I will begin your stop watch time uh, on your first word. You're going to do great. Quick, hold your breath. Your amount of oxygen is at risk due to the lack of biodiversity in our oceans. Good morning. My name is Lana Parker, and today I am here to talk to you about our ocean's decreasing biodiversity and what we can do to protect it. In the Gulf of Mexico, American fishermen are overexploiting the bluefin tuna populations, placing them on the International Union for Conservation of Nature Red List. Poor fishing techniques, unintended catch, pollution, and the demand from American and Japanese cultures puts pressure on the bluefin's struggling numbers and creates an imbalance in marine biodiversity. If the species goes extinct, it will create an unimaginable consequence on the ocean's ecosystem, affecting us all. As one of the main countries that deals with the catch of the bluefin, we do very little to help replenish the declining populations. Past efforts have failed, and our window to help is closing for this endangered species. 
action must be taken. Since the 1970s, the Atlantic bluefin tuna populations have declined by nearly 90%. This species is fished along the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Mediterranean Sea. However, this endangered fish is mainly caught by American and Canadian fishermen who in return do little to nothing to save the species from extinction. It is a popular sushi and sashimi delicacy in Japan and a prized sport fish in the United States. For example, one bluefin sold for $3 million in a Tokyo fish market. So it is widely commercially fished and quite the competition for experienced fishers. These cultural pressures promote overfishing and increase the population's decline. Additionally, the majority of the fishermen's catch is juvenile bluefin. This fish species takes up to 12 years to reach their sexual maturity and begin reproduction. As a result, more fish are caught than reproduced. If bluefin tuna goes extinct, American, Canadian, and Japanese fishing trade and markets would definitely see a profit loss. However, the biggest concern is the rest of our ocean's biodiversity. The bluefin is one of the ocean's top predators. It is needed to create and keep a balance in the ocean's ecosystem. Removing them would result in a collapse of the ocean food chain. Without one of the ocean's top predators, prey populations would increase. A larger prey population will feed on more of the ocean's producers, such as phytoplankton, seaweed, and kelp, which will drastically cause producer pollution populations to decrease. These ocean producers are our world's leading oxygen providers. They produce more than half of the oxygen we are breathing right now, so they're very important to our lives. Without the bluefin keeping our prey and producer populations in check, we would ultimately see consequences to ocean and human life. This leads us to the question, how do we protect marine biodiversity? The solution, farm raising. Farm raising is the act of commercially raising fish in enclosures within known bodies of water or in water tanks at hatcheries. There, they are fed, bred, and then delivered to fish markets. So how does farm raising protect marine biodiversity? Let's take our endangered bluefin for example. First, farm raising bluefin tuna takes the demand off of fishing from wild populations. In Japan, scientists from Kinkai University were the first to create the process of farm raising bluefin tuna. This is a delicate and large fish that requires perfect temperatures, plenty of food, and a sufficient amount of space. After many failed attempts, the scientists were able to create their now most practical process of farm raising. As of 2017, they reported that they are able to produce 4,000 individual fish. Their goal for their 2019 and 2020 production year is to increase to 6,000 fish. However, this is still not enough to take the demand off of fishing the wild bluefin populations. So we need to start looking at opening bluefin tuna hatcheries here in the United States. This is especially important since the American fishermen take bluefin from the Gulf of Mexico. In 2019, a grant was created to establish the first tuna hatchery in San Diego, California. But this is just one hatchery. If we fully want to take the fishing demand off wild populations, we need to increase hatcheries worldwide so they can completely support the fish markets and consumer intake. Relying on farm-raised tuna to be sent to fish markets allows wild bluefin to have the opportunity to reproduce and increase their populations on their own. Why else should we support the farm-raising of bluefin tuna? They're safer for us. If we encourage the consumption of farm-raised tuna instead of wild tuna, we are not only allowing them a better opportunity of survival, but keeping our bodies safe at the same time. Farm-raised tuna is proven to have lower mercury levels. Mercury, an element that can cause minimal to severe health damage, is found in most fish. But bigger fish, like tuna, tend to have higher levels of mercury. This makes it easier for humans to get mercury poisoning from bluefin tuna. However, farm-raised bluefin by the scientists at Kinkai University are fed younger fish who've had little time to be exposed to mercury contamination. They are also fed a low calorie diet since they do not have to swim as much as they would in their regular ocean environment. As a result, this lowers the chances of high mercury levels in farm-raised bluefin and is safer for humans to eat. Finally, farm-raised bluefin is safe from toxins and impurities found in our oceans. We all know that our, our oceans are polluted with plastics, sewage, oil, and the list goes on. 
This makes it very easy for our ocean species to ingest or absorb these impurities, which can later end up in us if we eat them from the wild. On April 20th, 2010, the Gulf of Mexico suffered the largest marine oil spill in history. According to Stanford and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, that oil spill covered more than 5% of the bluefin spawning habitat in the Gulf of Mexico. Though this is a relatively small portion of their spawning habitat, that still allows bluefin tuna and their eggs to be negatively impacted by the crude oil, such as stunting their growth. Oil spills can easily happen again and can be even more disastrous than Deepwater Horizon. But we can keep our marine biodiversity safe from events like this by farming them in hatcheries where impurities would not be able to reach them. Our ocean is seeing a loss of biodiversity. Bluefin tuna populations, for example, have been declining since the 1970s. This ecologically and economically important species has been overfished for years with slight replenishment. Bluefin is important to fishermen, Japanese chefs, and most importantly, marine biodiversity. So we need to do everything we can to save this species and remove its label of endangered. The solution is farm raising. These hatcheries provide wild populations the opportunity to reproduce without the fear of fishing and keeps the farm raised tuna safe from ocean impurities and mercury. This saves our oceans and our oxygen. Furthermore, we've made it work for one endangered species. Envision all the other endangered marine species we can begin to save. It's the perfect way to protect our marine biodiversity and replenish declining populations. So let's start farm raising. Thank you. Fantastic. Let me hit the stop recording. Recording. And I'm just, um, just so right now, I'm just pulling up my script on Google Docs on my phone. Uh, that'll be fine. Just pull up your script and then share your screen on the actual screen. So whenever you're ready, I'll begin. Hello, my name is Dalton Mitchell, and the question I'm presenting today is how can we pre prevent urban flooding? We are experiencing a, ser a serious problem right now, a problem that can destroy millions of, of lives without notice and is not getting any better. That problem is urban flooding. Well, what is urban flooding? Urban flooding is where cities experience large scale floods that are, that are liable to destroy millions of dollars in properties and harm hundreds of people. Some statistics on damages and causes of flooding. Since, not, since 1980, the United States has, ex, has had 265 separate events that afflicted over a billion dollars of flood damage dealt. The total damage dealt exceeds $1.775 trillion. The majority of causes for urban flooding are due to natural causes like large rainfall or rivers, or rivers flooding. Most are natural floods, which mean floods that wouldn't have happened if they're if there wasn't human intervention, have been caused by the overflowing of reservoirs and dams. Many cities are on extreme risk, right, extreme risk of urban flooding right now, such as Jersey City, New Jersey, Raleigh, North Carolina, Denton, Texas, Plano, Texas, and Houston, Texas, just to name a few. With all that in mind, what is the best solution? It is to improve the current drainage and water infrastructure. And what do I mean by that? I mean, the, the drainage systems that are, that are under our, our towns and cities and the city and the reservoirs and dams are surrounded that are surrounded by them and the natural floodplains as well. The main problem with floodplains is that they are expanding constantly to neighboring cities through erosion and, al and also the soil in floodplains can only absorb so much water and once they are full the the flooding risk is, is only to increase. The best way to fix the soil would be to add or invent a, a soil that can absorb water very fast and hold a lot of it too. The best kind of soil for, for that job is loam. We can also invest into a material that can, that can act as a more effective loam soil as well. Um, loam is the, loam is, the best kind of, is the best soil that, that can absorb the most water the quickest. And another solution for floodplains 
would be to add infrastructure that is engineered to absorb or block the, mo the most water possible um, for each location. Examples of these would be engineered green spaces that have a strategic amount of, of trees planted that would absorb the most, effective, the most water effectively. Also, any sort of levy that is made up of, of a soil that can reflect as much water as possible, like clay or sand, would also be effective. The solution for reservoirs and dams is to implement systems that keep reservoirs and, and dams in check. The worst ever dam failure to ha happen was in China in 1975 and killed tens of thousands of people, and, that, and the cause of that was under maintenance. And that just shows the risk of how low maintenance dams can inflict a, a lot of harm onto communities. In the United States, 15,000 15, dams are marked as high hazard potential, meaning that they are close to close to uh, high populous areas. 2,000 of them are liable, to, are liable to failure due to low maintenance. Dams are also not prepared for any extreme weather in most cases. The best solution of these, would, of these problems is to invent better technology to better the dams and reservoirs and ways of structure, like better engineered dams that can resist more water pressure. Fail safety systems, so, that the, so systems that are put in a place to keep check on dams and reservoirs, and ease of maintenance, meaning it is easier and more affordable to repair these, these structures. And finally, the solutions for draining, for drainage systems. In fact, drainage systems aren't the main problem for internalized urban flooding. It's actually new buildings that are causing a decrease in water seepage through soil and in, an increase in surface runoff. A solution to that is, a, is to engineer city designs around the natural flow and seepage of water and introduce to watersheds and to introduce watersheds. What that means is that newer cities being built need to, need to plan and invest in, into uh, more designs to be able to run water through it away from the city and just and into soil or into watersheds that, that, can, hold this, that can hold the water. Um, with, older, with older cities, what, what you could do would be to uh, introduce a top, since there's already, sorry, um, Older cities would need to have some sort of surface drainage system that brings runoff water outside the city. The watershed would be able to hold the water that is being moved by the newly introduced drainage systems. If we were to implement these solutions, we could make sure that billions of dollars don't go to waste, thousands of homes won't be destroyed, and hundreds of lives will be saved. Thank you. Um, great job. Let me stop the recording.